What's up everybody, Frank AZHP Collectibles here with a special video. This is my 100th video on this channel and rather than just do another mail time or pack opening, I wanted to have fun creating a video with a bit more presentation value than usual and do a little something different. So I'm gonna show you how I store my cards in a budget friendly way, maximize my space and keep it classy, organized and out of sight. And I'm covering individual card holders I use, the boxes I store them in, my shelf preference, and the modifications that I've made to the shelf. I'm not claiming my way is the best way as everyone's gonna have a system that works best for them. So don't take it as a personal attack if I have a slightly different thought process here. But my goal is to give you some ideas and some things to think about so that you can apply it the way that best fits for you. Before we get started, since this is my 100th video, I wanted to announce that I'm taking my presentation value to future videos to the next level. So rather than the dual camera view that I've used in the past, I will be moving to a triple camera view so you can all see my pretty face as well as the reactions that I give when I open product, you know, whether it be fresh packs or mail time packages, etc. Here's an example of what my videos looked like before. And here's what it'll look like in future videos. I've still got three or four videos ahead that I've already been recorded and edited and they use the dual cam, but all future recorded videos will be in the new format. Anyways, thanks for watching and let's go ahead and get started. Let's start out with the card supplies. So when we're talking raw cards, you see a lot of people use a one touch for expensive cards. There's nothing wrong with a good one touch, no complaints here. But the bulk of most people's low range to kind of mid range value collection is in top loaders. Well, I have completely ditched top loaders for semi rigid ones, uh, mostly referred to as card saver ones. So here's the reasons why. First off is cost. So semi-rigid ones are cheaper than standard top loaders at roughly 11 to 15 cents on average, compared to top loaders which average 15 to 19 cents each. Now that doesn't sound like that much on an individual basis, but it does add up quick. The thicker top loaders are also much more expensive, running averages of 25 cents each for 55 point, uh, 36 cents each for 79 point and 50 cents each for a 108 point. Cost isn't necessarily the main factor here, but it is a start and it is relevant. To me, the most important thing, number two, is the fit and the space. So semi-rigid ones fit almost all sizes of cards, unlike top loaders, which have like six different sizes. And Semi-rigids take up less space per box. So for every one graded card shoebox of semi-rigid ones that I have, I would have two standard shoeboxes of top loaders. Going into more depth on that, you can fit roughly 300 top loaders in a standard shoebox. And you can fit 500 semi-rigid ones into a graded card shoebox. Some dislike using semi-rigids because they think it's tough to get the cards in, but you know, once you get the whole corner and pinch technique down, you'll never have an issue again. It's just like second nature. As for other supplies that are relevant to organization, I made my own dividers as even the tall ones made by BCW aren't tall enough to work with semi-rigid ones and graded cards. Uh, so what I did is I ordered one package of magazine size dividers, measured the perfect height, and then cut them to fit, and then used my uh, thermal printer to uh, print out some nice labels, add a little bit of extra class. I mean, if you're cheap and you don't mind a lower presentation value, you can always just use pieces of cardboard. We've all done it. All right, now we're moving on to card storage boxes. So I use the BCW graded card shoe boxes for all of my graded stuff and my raw stuff since I use semi-rigid ones and they fit the semi-rigid ones perfectly. Uh, for my pack collection and my packs that I uh, store to then open later on my pack opening videos, I use standard card shoe boxes, but I put those boxes in a product from BCW that I absolutely adore. These are the BCW shoe box houses and each one of them fits six standard size shoe boxes. You can get these with or without the shoe boxes included, and it adds a greater level of organization and presentation value. 
And now we're getting into the meat here, the shelf. So I am absolutely in love with the IKEA Calyx shelves in general. I use them everywhere. They're extremely versatile. Um, but when it comes to trading cards in specific, the IKEA Calyx is the GOAT. Keep in mind there's a difference between the IKEA Calyx and the IKEA Eket shelves. The material used in the Eket shelves aren't as good and they have slightly less interior space at 12 and 5 8 inches uh, for both the width and the height rather than the Calyx's 13 inches for both width and height. Now you've probably seen these used in videos from shop owners or in person at your local card shop. Uh, my pick for an Ikea Calyx is not groundbreaking by any means, um, which I've been using them for a really long time for all kinds of stuff. I have just my entire space covered in them. But uh, you know, for cards in particular, they're just really good. And they, there's so many different customization options, which I'll get into in just a minute. But first, I'm going to cover why I choose the Calyx shelves specifically. Number one is fit. So they provide the right amount of width and depth for most card storage boxes. So 3,200 count boxes fit perfectly. You can get three of them in there. Graded card shoe boxes, you can get two in or the standard shoe boxes, you can get three in. They're all a great fit. Um, they don't work well with the three section card boxes that a lot of people use for one touches, um, but those are deeper than other card boxes anyway. It's gonna kind of trouble you no matter what shelf you use. Uh, number two is cost. So whether you are going to your local Ikea um, or getting them shifted directly to you from Ikea's website or finding them used on offer up and Craigslist like I do, you can get them for like 40 to 60% off of the new price. And you, and you can find these everywhere. They are very, very common and they're cheap. And that moves me to number three, construction. And when I say, so when I say cheap, I don't refer to as construction. I mean, these, these shelves are not solid wood or anything. If they were, they'd be hundreds of dollars. Uh, but the construction quality is still very, very solid. The interior shelves are held together with each other with wooden dowels and the exterior panels connect with long hex screws. So just take note, if you're gonna buy an Ikea Calyx cube shelf, get the official Ikea brand. Don't get some random cube storage out there from some big box retailer. Almost all of the substitutes are flimsy knockoffs. Even if you're buying used, some sellers will unintentionally uh, list a shelf as an Ikea shelf just because it's cube storage, um, even though it's a knockoff. So you can tell by the larger width of the outside boards in comparison to the inside boards and the four hex key screws on the top and four hex key screws on the bottom. Uh, most of the knockoffs will have the same size boards as the outside as they do for the shelves in the inside and a lot of them will use standard Phillips head wood screws as well. Uh, these are also extremely easy to break down and set up so even if you buy used and you go to you know pick it up in a small car you can break one down in a driveway in less than 10 minutes stick it in your car bring it back to your place set it up and you can have you can have it set up within 20 minutes. I've done this numerous times, it's super simple. Number four is presentation value. So there's a ton of shelves that you could use uh, that are made of you know quality materials that I can't hate on, like steel or aluminum, some heavy duty stuff, things that you can use or that you would see used in like restaurant supply, uh, like a restaurant dry storage. But the Ikea Calyx shelves have a very simple, classy decor. Uh, and they come in a bunch of different colors. It just kind of fit in with a household. So, uh, and then number five, they stack. So the standard ceiling height for a house in the United States is nine feet. And by stacking two of these, you're able to use your vertical space, which most people don't really use in their households. Um, plus with stacking them, you also have uh, an additional storage area up on the top as well. All right, now we're moving on to the customization options. And this is kind of going into depth on why these shelves are so great, besides what I've already listed. Uh, whether it's displaying your stuff or whether it's hiding your stuff, these shelves are highly customizable. Uh, there's a ton of options for inserts for these shelves from IKEA directly, as well as common stores like Target, uh, Walmart, Container Store, Big Lots, 
I mean, there's even people who make custom stuff on Etsy that fits for these perfectly as well. So, uh, though I don't recommend getting the brand other than Ikea itself for the uh, for the shelf itself, the inserts can be picked up anywhere. Almost all cube storage, uh, you know, shelf inserts are gonna have, they're gonna fit inside of a 13 by 13 interior space. Now I use a couple of these boxes. I use uh, some of the Ikea Drona boxes for other stuff like this one here that has my McFarlane sports picks. Um, and I have a couple others that I use to stash team merch. Uh, that I've used for like photo shoots for my card stuff. I personally don't like having a shelf where you can see the contents in the interior. So inserts to me are pretty much a requirement. Um, and for those who live with a spouse or a partner, hiding the contents may minimize the attention to your collection by uh, allowing it to blend in with the decor. So kind of out of sight, out of mind, if you know what I mean. <laughs> now, um, because I wanted the contents hidden and I wanted a kind of a white minimalist look, um, which if you've seen how I take photos of my, my cards on Instagram or Twitter, I mean, you know, I, I'm all about that, that clean white minimalist look. But, um, but I, I didn't, I didn't want to get the expensive door inserts from Ikea. They're like 22 bucks a pop. So I got these large packs of 12 by 12 canvases on Amazon uh, for under 40 bucks. Um, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, and then I used a thumbtack to poke holes in the sides of those canvases and then screwed in eye hooks uh, bonded with some E6000 glue. Uh, then I took a tiny little drill bit, make some pilot holes in the top of the shelves and then screwed in the cup hooks on the shelves. So now I can hide my collection behind a nice clean white canvas that has a uh, kind of a hanging effect from a distance. So you could get really creative with these too, if you wanted with these canvases, uh, you could paint each one or you could even apply photos with a spray adhesive. Uh, or I mean, if you're, if you're feeling particularly chaotic, you could sticker bomb them too. I mean, there's, there's just so many different options here between the inserts, um, what I did, it's just, it's amazing. Now that I've covered the supplies, the boxes and the shelf, uh, now I think I'll show you how I store my collection on the shelf itself. So first the top two rows uh, are for the shoebox houses with my packs and my pack collection and the Ikea Drona boxes with the team merch. Uh, and the McFarlane toys. So um, both the four cube two by two calyx and the eight cube four by two calyx can be modified to fit the shoebox houses um, within a two cube space. It has just enough room on the sides for you know some some books, some Beckets, uh, and as well as some extra space on top for other stuff like supplies. Now, if you do this, just make sure that you use the unused shelf inserts to support the weight of the middle shelf. Uh, you could probably get away with doing this on the larger shelves as well, like the 16 cube four x four shelf or the 25 cube five x five shelf. But I wouldn't be willing to risk the structure on those larger shelves. I mean, if you do, you could probably just add some reinforcement on the back of the shelves as well, do some diagonal boards or something. But then uh, we're moving on to the next rows. I've got uh, I've got two rows here. It's one row of graded stuff and one row of raw stuff in the semi-rigids. Though I like maximizing my space, it seems counterproductive to have this empty space on each shelf. But having that extra space on the side is very nice to store other collectibles um, i use them for these top cyber card software boxes or unopened boxes of wax mini helmets i mean it's, it's pretty convenient for me personally so then i've got one row of nothing but incoming and outgoing mail so when you watch my videos you're seeing stuff that i purchased a super long time ago it's just been stacking in this space and uh, basically I stack packages from these various sports. I'll label the envelope or box uh, with the sport. And then once I get six packages for one sport, I'll stick them in a pl plastic grocery bag, slap a sticker on the side that states what sport it is and what number bag it is so that I know what order to open them in. And then I will add them to the this huge stack. So 
finally, once I'm ready to dedicate an entire day to film, I'll just film like 15 videos at, on one day, and then I can just edit them at my own pace. Uh, and then the bottom row is where I store my comic boxes. I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. Assuming your shelf is a little bit away from the wall, the short comic book boxes fit perfectly well. And I would imagine that the magazine style boxes would work as well if you collect like old Beckett's or Sports Illustrated's or something like that. So that's how I personally store my trading cards. Uh, hopefully you got something useful out of this video and the information that I've provided it will maybe inspire you to make some changes to your setup or utilize your space better uh, or to be more organized or add some more presentation value to your collection, whatever it is. Uh, since this is my 100th video, I thought I'd also fill you in on what videos I have coming up. So as you saw, I was, I've been stacking bags of mail for mail time videos. And at the time of recording of this, I've got seven football, three basketball, three wrestling, one hockey, one baseball. Um, besides that, I've got some retail stuff from Wildcard, and I've got a huge Com C order with over 300 cards, including over 150 refractors. Um, I will also continue the classic Tops pack opening videos with both football and with hockey. And I'll be releasing an updated invest video for 2022 since the last one is a year old. Uh, speaking of a year old, my pack collection video is also over a year old. So I'll do a 2022 update for that. And I'm also finally getting around to ripping the Topps CyberCard software CDs so that I can run that software in a virtual machine running Windows 95 and show you what these contain. I'm super excited on that. Um, I may also do a few spotlights on sections of my collection, like my Andres Pete Rainbow from 2015 Chrome, uh, or the entire 2013 Topps Archives fan favorites auto set, or maybe even some individual player spotlights from a couple of my favorites, like uh, Patrick Willis or Marcus Colston. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you would like to see next, and if it's a good idea and it's something that I hadn't thought of yet, then. Um, and I, and I end up using it at least, I'll, I'll send you like a, like a care package of some cool stuff. So, but, uh, but yeah, that's it. Thanks guys. If this video has been helpful, um, hit a like, a subscribe and all that if you want to see more. And a few clicks of engagement really does go a long way towards helping the channel grow. Uh, so where other people can experience my collecting journey alongside me, as well as learn from the experience that I provide from 32 years of collecting. Uh, you can also check me out on Instagram and Twitter right here. Ding. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next vid. Peace.